king proclaimed a royal decree, announcing a reward for whoever brought the princess home safely. The news spread quickly throughout the kingdom. Hey, my kitty, what are you doing? What are you doing, kitty? Oh, you're a sweet little kitty. Hey, everybody, how are you doing? Uh, we're here, and on this episode of Give It A Shot, we're going to be talking about a game I have been playing a lot of the past year. Uh, this game is a, uh, it's a co-op card collecting RPG uh it's it's just a lot of fun and uh, we're gonna talk about it today it is across the obelisk so uh i figured we would do this one a little bit differently a little more conversationally um and i'm just gonna talk about why i really love across the obelisk right now so number one it is a card collecting rpg uh deck builder sort of like uh, Slay the Spire in that same vein, that type of game. Um, so you get that automatically. It's a, uh, it's however a co-op game. And uh, there's just, there's so much to unlock in it. There's lots of things to get. Um, there's lots of cool characters. You've got four character classes with a warrior, a scout, a healer, and a mage. Um, and there are multiple characters, four characters of each in there. But you unlock these characters as you go. And these characters are great because uh, the warriors are there to like defend your team, the block damage that you take. The uh, scouts, you can have uh, you can have a scout that's either melee focused, ranged focused. You can even have a scout that's a bard and more of like a spellcaster in that support role. Very neat. Then you have your um, your mages. And they do mostly elemental damage, but they are also able to do dark damage. They can do some like some mind damage, and um, they're able to uh, also give resources to your other teammates so that they can uh, take better turns. And then finally, you have your healers. These are your primarily used for healing, although almost all of them are also pretty exceptional at dealing damage. And so with all these classes, they really help you feel like you're an asset to the team, especially if you're playing with a group of friends. Each character can shine and can make a big difference in the uh, in the battles and the uh, the way you build your decks can really affect that. So that's something I really like about Across the Obelisk. Again, it's co-op. That is such a huge thing. While Slay the Spire is great, it's so nice to be able to sit down with a friend or a group of friends and just work through a really interesting and difficult uh, little uh, fresh randomized RPG. Um, and it doesn't have to be difficult. There's actually a ton of different difficulties, and that's something I also really like about Across the Obelisk. It's got 14, no, 16 unlockable difficulties, so you can really just slowly ratchet that up, and you actually unlock those difficulties as you play, so... It really lets you get into some really, really, uh, uh, interesting fights where your deck building really comes into play. And we're talking about deck building. This is a big part of the game. There's, uh, like I said, there's, there's four classes and each class has about a hundred unique cards, uh, to it. So depending on the character and sort of what you want to do with your decks each card is useful in its own situation and um in addition to the hundred cards that your characters get you also have access to uh, equipment because it's an rpg you've got a weapon you've got armor you've got a ring slot and then you've got like a potion slot and finally you have a pet slot now all of these can be uh you could find items to put in and they will make your character better fix your synergies up sort of make you do a lot more damage or maybe make you more defensive or a little bit of toolbox you can uh you can you can get all sorts of really cool combos so that i think is super awesome about uh across the obelisk as well another big thing i mean it's a it's a card combat rpg the combat is fun it's a lot of fun especially uh 
I really like the higher difficulty levels. There's just so much thought and strategy that you put into every single little piece of your decks and every fight. Um, but it's not so damagingly punishing where, yes, it is a roguelike. So if you lose, you're, you're done. You're kicked back uh, and there goes your progress. But the game has uh, progress outside of each run, which is standard for most um, RPG um, uh, roguelikes. So you do get like to get perk points on each individual character and uh, you can level them in different ways and you can uh, respec at any time between um, between runs. So that's super fun. You can make all sorts of different decks with those perk points because they really make a, di a big difference. But um, yeah, combat is just a lot of fun. It's fun with the mechanics involved. There's a lot of uh, status effects because it's an RPG, so you're going to be wanting to like put a bunch of status effects on the enemies. You basically uh, want to build synergies between your characters. So you want to stack the same types of damages to do a lot of damage. But that's not always the case. Sometimes there's uh, there's different strategies that work, which is super cool. But you know, the fights are diverse. There's tons of different enemies. There's also cool optional modifiers you can put onto each fight that really allow for uh, that extra little bit of risk reward. There's um, there's really cool rewards, but the risk is uh, definitely risky at times. But I love that. I think it's really cool to give you that option that you can sort of test your your decks to their limits and really try to get that extra bonus. I like that a lot. The enemies, like I said, are super diverse, which is awesome. They're diverse in both appearance and strategy. I think there's like a hundred enemies in the game. 20 of those are bosses, and then there's sub-bosses as well. So there's just lots of variety. And on the certain difficulties, you can have like randomly made uh, groups of enemies. So you get to see these crazy strategies and weird enemy combos that really test you. Um, the game supports a main campaign, which is where you're going to mostly be playing. There's uh, that campaign has a lot to unlock. That's where you're going to unlock all your characters. You're going to unlock your new cards. You're going to get the bulk of your experience points there to put your perks. Um, but then there's also challenge modes. And these challenge modes are actually super cool. I kind of stayed away from the challenge modes for a little while when I first started, but they are really fun. Uh, there's a weekly and then there's just like a, a, a regular one that's always similar. Um, but the weekly challenges, they actually recently updated and they're cr really cool. They, um, they have like a, a rotating weekly challenge and you get... Uh, specific characters for that week it'll give you four characters and they're locked in position so sometimes it's like a really weird position you have like a mage out front and a tank in the third position you're like what am i doing but it's really cool to try to make these uh characters work but in addition to getting your randomized characters or set in stone characters i should say per um weekly event you get a cool system of selecting your cards. So you no longer get the perks in the challenge mode that you get in the story mode. But with the removal of the perks, you get a cool like draft mode. It's almost like Magic the Gathering's draft mode. You have like 10 different packs to choose from. Each pack has three cards. You can select those packs or you can re-roll them all. Um, and uh, then select your your packs once you select your packs you get an additional card that'll help sort of um, fix out your deck or amplify uh, which is cool and then you get some little perks that you can decide on for the uh, for that run but I love how self-contained they are and the weekly challenges are pretty cool you get a, like a card back which is fun every time as well um, but yeah across the obelisk man I am just loving this game uh, just talking here about all of the uh, mechanics that I love and why Across the Obelisk is so fun. But there we go. That was Give It a Shot for this week. If uh, what I'm talking about sounds cool, if you like these types of games, you like Slay the Spire, give it a shot. Go out and check out Across the Obelisk if you haven't. Honestly, play it with a friend. I think 
playing it with a friend is my favorite way to play i love playing two player it supports up to four but to be honest i think with four players you end up waiting a lot there's other people on different monitors they're doing their own thing with two people it's pretty perfect you both get a couple of characters and you get to mix and match sort of uh what your roles are which is pretty nice i think that helps so anyway if this sounds fun go out there and give it a shot and if you like me and if you like this more conversational style of video please go ahead and uh, let me know in the comments give it a like give it a share give it a uh, give me give me a subscribe but uh yeah that is it for us this week that's give it a shot for across the obelisk so yeah check it out